Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. So today I posted a photo on Instagram and it was this photo here. And I had uh, a few people ask me if I would do a video tutorial on how I went about editing this. And so that's what we're going to do now. So let's dive in. So this is the finished product and let me show you what we started off with, which is this image here. So as you can see, it's quite a bit different. So I started off by just doing some basic edits and let me just kind of, kind of this kind of thing, maybe a little bring up the shadows stuff like this. I didn't really do too much to it initially because I was kind of, uh, at first I was trying to basically uh, do kind of a minimalist approach to it. Um, so we ended up with something like this. And then I was thinking, you know what, let's do something a bit more to it. So I thought, um, why not do kind of like a filmy type effect or what's often referred to these days as the cinematic look. So for this, generally I start with the curve still um, and I'm going to do something like this. So for a typical film effect type thing, what you would do is you'd raise the black slightly and kind of drop this down. This kind of creates a, like a film, like a tone curve. What I also want to do is I'm going to warm this up a bit, but I'm not going to use the white balance to do this. I'm going to do it with the curve because it does give you a slightly different effect. So to do this, what you do is take the red curve and drag at the very center, just drag it up a little, then go to blue and just drag it down a little. So you get a nice, interesting effect like this. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go down to the color grading tool. So I'm going to drag down the black slider like so. So an interesting trick, um, and I'm actually going to do a separate video about this is when you adjust the curves like this and you basically raise the black and white values, the exposure controls no longer can go past the limit you set in the curve. So for example, if I drag the blacks down, you can see if you look at the histogram, it's hitting kind of a wall. Um, and that's because basically Lightroom evaluates, evaluates from top to bottom. So uh, because I've dragged up this point and dragged down this point, um, None of the controls above this will ever change that. However, with the new color grading control, um, I can actually drag this down. So it's almost like having a leveled tool that kind of functions after the curves tool. I know that's kind of a nerdy thing, but anyway. So it just, it gives you an interesting effect. So that's what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna drag this up a bit. And I'm also gonna just add a little bit of color to the shadows, I wanna make it a bit green. Okay, and in the mid-tones, I'm just going to add a bit more warmth to it. So just, just a subtle amount, so I don't want to overdo it. So another trick I often use when doing um, kind of film effects is to crank the saturation up, or crank the vibrance up, and then drop the saturation down, like so. Um, and this can often give you kind of an interesting, um, it's an interesting, uh, affects the tones in an interesting way. So... The next thing I want to do is I want to try and pick out some of the colors in it. And I also want to kind of affect the sky a bit. So um, and for saturation, I just want to bring up the oranges a bit and the yellows kind of to bring out these colors. Um, and again, it's kind of a subtle thing, but it, it does make a difference overall. Um, f for hue, what I want to do is I want to just bring the blue kind of back in the negative direction, just, just a little so that it it kind of um, gives you this more kind of, uh, I don't know what the word is. <laughs> it's just a nicer shade of blue, in my opinion. Um, and then for luminance, I'm just going to bring the blue down a bit. So we're kind of getting more into the clouds. And then, of course, the other thing I'm forgetting to do here is I want to bring a bit more clarity into this. And maybe add just a little bit of texture as well. I, kinda, I don't want to go too far with this because he ends up giving a kind of an over-processed look. So I actually think I've brought the shadows down a bit too much with this and I'm going to just bring the whites up a bit. So I think we're just going to, we're going to take, it's a bit too green so I wanted a bit more blue, kind of more of a turquoisey color or teal. I think that's the right color and again we just, we don't want too much on it. Okay, 
And I think actually I'm going to add a bit of saturation to the blue as well. Okay, so that's not bad, but there's one kind of big problem here, and that is the sky. The sky is kind of, uh, it's a bit, um, let's just say it's a bit boring. Um, the clouds aren't particularly great, and you kind of got this white patch here, and it's actually throwing the balance off of the whole image. Like, so for example, if I go to the crop tool, you can see we have a nice kind of real third thing going on here, but because the sky is so flat and um, it's throwing the balance out so the obvious thing to do is let's replace the sky so two options for replacing the sky I could use luminar or I could use Photoshop and in this case I'm going to use Photoshop and I will explain why in a second so I'm just gonna go edit in Photoshop okay I'll jump over to Photoshop okay so we've opened our image in Photoshop here and what I'm going to do I'm going to go to edit sky replacement Okay, so there's two reasons I want to use um, Photoshop for this rather than Luminar. The first is the skies in Luminar, um, there's a real problem with the skies in Luminar in that they are not um, particularly high resolution, so you end up getting kind of a lot of um, artifacts in them because they're scaled up. And secondly, um, if you use Photoshop sky replacement, you actually get layers that you can then tweak. So if I zoom in here, you can see there's a few issues with the mask going on. Um, so there's two ways to fix the mask. You can actually just kind of paint it in, but also this shift edge function will kind of basically adjust the auto-generated mask. So if I go back to something like this, that's actually fixed most of it. Um, and that's actually a pretty good uh, result. So let's just click OK here. Um, so now we have kind of lots of different layers uh, with all our different functions on it and we can do a bit more tweaking. So the first thing to note is if I zoom in a bit here, you can see there is a little bit of grain in my foreground, um, but there's no grain in the background. And also the colors aren't quite 100% to what we would like. So we can fix this easy enough. All I'm going to do is go to the sky layer and I am going to run the uh, camera raw filter on it. Okay, like so, um, and unfortunately you don't get to see this live, so this is going to be a bit of guesswork here. So I'm going to go down to effects and just add a bit of grain. We just need a small amount just to kind of make this work. Okay, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match the grade a bit better. So if I go to color grading, and again, we know we added a bit of kind of teal into it here, and maybe we'll just bring that down a bit and I also want to kind of just adjust the saturation just a little bit because it's the overall image that we have isn't kind of there's no popping colors in it so we don't want to overdo it so let's just see how this looks okay so that's much better and if we zoom in again you can see the mask is pretty good there's still maybe a few issues with it but we can actually fix that if we go in here and let's get our brush tool. Oh, wrong way. And just very carefully fix the mask. Get it back out. Yep, that's looking a lot better now. So uh, I can just save this, bring this back into Lightroom. And let's just jump back into Lightroom. Okay, so this is our final result. Um, you can always do a bit more to it once you get it back here. So for example, I could add a vignette. In fact, I think that's actually what was missing from the other one. Um, we can do something like this. And see we could just add a little bit more contrast and maybe just tweak the sky a bit more now that we have a new sky on it maybe just something like this okay so there we have it there is how you add drama to an image using uh, Lightroom and Photoshop um, and as you can see that didn't actually take that long so once you kind of uh, experiment and play around a bit um, you can achieve quite a lot Um I know to sometimes people complain about sky replacements but like this isn't it's not uh, photojournalism i'm not trying to say this is exactly how it was in the time i'm just trying to make a nice image so um 
definitely, if you haven't tried out the sky replacement feature in in Photoshop, um, if you have been using Luminar for your sky replacements, it's I think it's better. Um, while Luminar does have more features, I think uh, having the extra layers gives you just that much more flexibility um, by using it in Photoshop. So I hope you found this useful. Please like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.